welcome to the third Sunday of Easter. I wanted to explain something before I actually start the service, and that is, you see me wearing a chasuble, a white chasuble, that we wear at Easter time, but normally the priest would wear this when presiding over a sacrament and wear something quite different if just doing the word. I felt like it's important for us to remember that we are a sacrament as the church. And so standing here in this chasuble is a symbol, is, a, is it's pointing to the fact that we as the church, although we are separated in our own homes, we are still the sacrament of the church. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. May God's grace and peace be with you, and may our hearts be filled with joy. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires are known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the, your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday. O oh God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from the book of Acts. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourself from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Psalm 116. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications, because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. The snares of death encompass me, the pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. I suffered distress and anguish. Then I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, save my life. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all the people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. 
I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. A reading from Peter's first letter. If you invoke as Father, the one who judges all people impartially, according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him, and he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death, and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. 
They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I wonder if anybody was like me when you heard the story of the road to Emmaus. The picture of people walking along the road together, speaking to each other then being joined by a stranger and having more conversation, and eventually being able to invite that stranger to a table and share a meal together. Makes me feel wistful about what we cannot do right now. And yet, this passage is about Easter. It's about Jesus being made known it's about God's presence, not God's absence. There are a lot of things happening these days that make us feel or can make us feel that there is more absent in our life than present. It's really important to know from the readings we have heard this day, from the Good News Gospel, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that nothing, nothing can separate us from God's love. No suffering, no anguish, that God is present in our lives. The symbol we have in the gospel was Jesus breaking the bread. For us, the presence is realized. They didn't recognize him in his form. They didn't recognize him when he had the bread in his hands. They recognized Jesus when he broke the bread. It is in brokenness that we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is present. And it is in brokenness of our lives, of our world, of our creation. It is in that brokenness that we can proclaim most strongly the presence of God. That is what our Easter journey is about. It's not about just that one time arriving at an empty tomb and being able to say the Lord has risen. No, it's the journey as we go on from there. And throughout that journey, every moment of brokenness, God is present. We see when Peter's talking to the crowd, we can see that he's still focusing mainly on the people of Israel. And he's speaking passionately. This is Peter speaking passionately about forgiveness, about repentance, and proclaiming that such repentance stretches even to those we are away from. What an incredible image that is. Imagine a person standing there, separated from their family, separated from people they know and love, and yet in the midst of that, they are hearing words that say, your repentance, your forgiveness can stretch to even to those that are absent. Surely those are words of hope for us, that we may know that when we hear these words, we are connected 
connected to all those in faith. Those we can see, those we cannot see, those we can hear speaking, and those we cannot hear speaking. We have the assurance that God is present. And I love the gentleness of what happens at the end of this passage in Acts. The line is that all those who heard the message, who welcomed, all those who welcomed the message were baptized. There's no condemnation of anybody who didn't welcome the message. And I think that that is so significant that we remember that our embracing of God and of God's of our own repentance and forgiveness, when we embrace that, we embrace that on behalf of all because that's who the Christ is. Peter goes on to say in his letter, this is a beautiful, beautiful image in this letter and somewhat surprising from Peter. I always get the feeling that Peter is just this kind of uh, a hard-nosed guy who, who really is trying to stick to the letter of the law and keep people in control. But in this beautiful letter, what he connects people with, the most important thing that he connects them to is having the deepest heart of love. That the thing that is most important about being the community that God is calling us to be, the most important thing is mutual love. And not just mutual love, but the deepest of love in our hearts, in our deepest hearts. That is where we are being guided. Whether we are absent to our family, or to things happening around us in the world, present always in our deepest hearts is our mutual love. Our love for each other and our planet, and it comes from a deep place. And that is where we go to find the presence. Not anywhere but there. Bishop Andrew has written a letter to the diocese commending us to pay attention to the signs around us that are about happiness and hope and new life and that we may find in our times together in isolation that there are gifts that have come to us. One thing he notices is how the earth has responded to the lessening of human activity. That in fact, this has been a respite time for our earth. The created order, creatures are able to gather together that weren't able to gather together with so much human activity. The earth is thriving because we have minimized our activity. Now, if that's not a message to us, about what our impact is in our world, then we are not paying attention. And in noticing that, maybe we can also see within our deepest hearts that in reality, maybe our past normal was not good enough. And it was not a normal we want to re-embrace. Maybe as we move forward into the future, we need to embrace something quite different. Not to return to what was the old normal, and not even to return to normal at all, but to be bold with our faith and the sharing of our deepest love. That is what we're called to. St. Peter's is in the process of building a new church with St. Ninian's and St. John the Divine. 
This isn't just about the people who gather in those buildings right now. This is about the dream of God for our future. And our future is bigger than we can ask or imagine. We have an opportunity here to be bold in our faith, to be bold in our deepest love, and not to return to some old normal, but be bold and generous as we move forward, responding from our deepest hearts with love, knowing that God is present in all that we do and all that we are. Now, it's, uh, it's impossible to talk about passages, whether they're of scripture or of life or of death. This week we have heard a lot. Each day we hear a lot about death. The numbers who have died. They're not just numbers. They are people. They are people known to us. I want to acknowledge that within our parish this week, we celebrate the life of John Nichol and Audrey Taylor. I know with that Audrey Taylor that she did die of COVID-19. And it is dreadful for her family. One son who lives here who couldn't see her and a son who lives in Nova Scotia that couldn't travel to her. And the last image they had of her was celebrating her 90th birthday by phone outside the window of her nursing home, only a little while ago. It is so painful to have to be absent from those we love. But the confidence we bring to that is the presence of God in the midst of every brokenness. The presence of God with life in the midst of death. In the midst of brokenness, to bring healing, to touch our memories, and to bring us life. I can't talk about passages of death without making mention also of Nova Scotia and the slaughter of so many people by one man. How can one man bring about such horrible devastation? Our attention is drawn to one person in Christ. The one person in Christ that can heal all brokenness. Violence is never a victor, not in the story of God. In the presence of brutality, in the presence of suffering and sorrow, the presence of God emerges deeper and brighter than any one human actor. Because one person in the name of God died for us all. And that is what we can proclaim. And that's what will give us comfort. We will not remember the one man who causes devastation. We'll remember the 22 who lived lives to the full. And we will remember the one who gave up his life on a cross so the rest of us may know in the midst of any sorrow or any suffering that we are not alone. So I urge you, I urge you as we live through the situations of our lives in feeling the sharp pain of absences, but also the deep comforting hope of the presence the presence of God's love in the midst of suffering and sorrow. And let us be bold from our deepest hearts. Let us love deeply and let us love all of creation. And may we move forward as a people of God 
in a new way, with new life and new hope and new possibility. Thanks be to God. Amen. As I share the prayers of the people, I want to begin with a prayer for those who have died, especially as we remember closely Audrey Taylor and John Nichol, and also Wilhelmina's daughter Gail and Bill Lewis. We remember all those who have been close to our hearts. We pray for all those suffering in Nova Scotia. Merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life, raise us, we humbly pray, from the death of sin to the life of righteousness, that when we depart this life, we may rest in him, and at the resurrection receive that blessing which your well-beloved Son shall then pronounce. Come, you blessed of my Father, receive the kingdom prepared for you from the beginning of the world. Grant this, O merciful Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, O Lord, to all who are bereaved the spirit of faith and courage, that they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love. And this we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord together. Loving God, we thank you for your many gifts to us, for the love which brings us together, for the earth which provides for our needs, and for the new life you have given us in Jesus Christ. We pray to you for our Christian family, and especially we remember those who are providing essential services those who are putting their life at risk for the sake of others and for grace to grow in your love. We pray to you for our world, for all its cares and needs, and for all who lead us and care for us. We pray that leadership may indeed guide us into a way of life that is nurturing of all people, we pray that there may be a solution to the devastation of this virus. And we pray for all people of the world who have been devastated by this virus. We also pray for our created order, that we may pay attention to all of creation. We pray to you for those in need, for the sick and for the lonely, for the hurt and the frightened, and for those who live without hope. We pray today for Esther Banke, Marie and Jason Millette, Andre Little, Brenda and Pat O'Brien, Joe De Silva, Reeve Moore, Andrea Watson, Beverly Williams, Derek and Marie, Barry Beekford, Darcy Miller, the Lindsay family, Nigel Ealing, Pierce Miller, Doreen Chung, the Bill Lewis family, the Wilhelmina Fisher family, the family of Bill Nickel, and the family of Audrey Taylor. We pray for those we love who have died, that you will surround them with your care and love. And especially, we pray today for John and for Audrey. 
May their souls and the souls of the faithfully departed rest in peace and let light perpetual shine upon them. We pray for one another, asking you to bless us, our friends and our relatives. Bless the places where we are and bless our home and our life together. As we offer all of these prayers, we pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Before I pronounce the blessing, I want to make uh, one announcement, and that is that we are running a food pantry at uh, the church. It's something that I am doing myself in terms of handing out things so that it's safe. I'm the only one actually handing out food, but there are many other people behind the scenes who are gathering food together for our pantry, and I urge you to either support with food or support with uh, money contributions so that we can continue uh, to respond at St. Peter's Pantry. I want to assure you that we are doing this ministry with the utmost care for not only ourselves, but for the people we are serving. So I urge you to consider uh, this ministry, especially as St. Ninian's Food Bank is closed there is much more call on the need for food in our neighborhood. Thank you for those who have responded so far. It has been heartwarming, deeply felt, and I look forward to other gifts coming forward. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you, and those you love, now and forever. Amen.